Hey guys, Mr. Back, we're here. I've been putting off making this video because I've been sick and haven't really had a voice the last couple of days, but I decided to just try to power through it. So we've got four objectives. We're gonna use algebraic techniques to solve trig equations. We're gonna solve trig equations using multiple angles. We're gonna use inverse functions to solve trig equations, and we're gonna solve trig equations by graphing. Okay, so here in our first example, we've got the cosine of x plus 1 equals the sine of x, and we're going to find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Since we're given that interval from 0 to 2 pi, remember that means at the end we won't have to add on those extra rotations at all. So here's what I see. Right now we've got cosines and sines. Normally we would look for an identity to try to switch one of these into the other one, but I don't see any identities that we could use right now to turn this cosine into a sine or this sine into a cosine. So we're actually going to do something a little bit different than what we've done before. And we're going to square both sides. So we're going to square the left-hand side, and we're going to square the right-hand side. Now at the end, since we're squaring these, we could be introducing what are called extraneous solutions. So we'll want to go through and check our answers at the end just to make sure that all of them do work. With this first one, when we're squaring it, we do have to remember that it's a binomial times another binomial, so we would end up having to foil that out. When we do that, we get the cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine of x plus 1. And the right-hand side, if we take sine and square it, we just get sine squared of x. Now taking a look at this one, we could use a Pythagorean identity to replace that sine squared. And we're going to replace that with 1 minus the cosine squared of x. Now this thing is quadratic. We've got squareds going on. And when we solve quadratics, we typically want to have a 0 on one side. So I'm going to start moving this stuff over to the other side by adding this cosine squared of x over to the left-hand side. I'm also going to subtract the 1 at the same time. So cosine squared plus cosine squared is 2 cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine of x. And if we subtract that 1, those end up canceling out, so we get equal 0. Now I'm going to do a little bit of GCF factoring on the left-hand side here because we've got a 2 in each term. We've also got cosines in each term. So I'm going to factor out 2 cosine of x. Then we're left over with the cosine of x and plus 1 equals 0. After we factor, we want to take each individual factor and set it equal to 0. And now we're going to go through and solve each one. So on this first one, we would divide this 2 over to the right-hand side. So cosine of x equals 0. And then we're going to rewrite that one as an inverse. And if we think about where that's happening, where the cosine, where the x value is 0, looking between 0 and 2 pi, that happens at the angle pi over 2. It also happens at the angle 3 pi over 2. Taking a look at our other one, we would subtract that 1 over to the right-hand side. So cosine of x equals negative 1. Rewrite that as an inverse. And then check out our unit circle. Where does an x value, a cosine value of negative 1 happen? That happens at the angle pi. Now we said earlier that when we square both sides, we could end up introducing an extraneous solution. So we need to check all of our answers. And that means plugging them back in. We're going to plug these back into our original equation. So let's start with the pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 plus 1 equals the sine of pi over 2. We're just checking to make sure that this actually does work. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. So left-hand side, if we add those up, we get 1. Right-hand side is 1, so pi over 2 works. If we check 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus 1 equals the sine of 3 pi over 2. Checking this one out, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Left-hand side, we get 1. Right-hand side, we get negative 1. Those don't match up, so that tells me that 3 pi over 2 is not actually a solution. If we check pi, cosine of pi plus 1 equals the sine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. So left-hand side, that adds up to 0. Right-hand side is 0, so that one works. So pi over 2 and pi work, but 3 pi over 2 did not work when we plugged it back in. Take a look at our next example. We've got 2 cosine of 3t minus 1 equals 0. And this one does have multiple angles, meaning that there's a number in front of our t value. So remember, that's going to affect our angles and our period at the very end. So if we just start solving this one, we would add that 1 over to the right-hand side. So 2 cosine of 3t equals 1, dividing each side by 2 we get the cosine of 3t equals 1 half. Now rewriting this one as an inverse, we've got 3t equals the inverse cosine of a half. And we're checking the unit circle for where that x value or cosine value is a half. It happens at two places. It happens at the angle 
pi over 3, and also the angle 5 pi over 3. This one did not give us that interval from 0 to 2 pi, meaning we're going to have to do all of that extra coterminal angle stuff. So we've got this 3t equals, we're going to take that pi over 3 angle plus our period of 2 pi n. We've also got 3t equals our 5 pi over 3 plus that 2 pi n. And now we need to get that t value all by itself. So we're going to divide everything by 3. On the first one, t equals, well, pi over 3 divided by 3 ends up giving us pi over 9 plus 2 pi divided by 3 is just 2 pi over 3. And then we've got that n value on the end. With our second one, again, we're going to have to divide by that 3. So we get t equals 5 pi over 3 divided by 3 gives us 5 pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3 with our n value on the end. I want you guys to try this one out on your own, so pause the video, run through it. Once you get all done, you can start it back up to check your answers. First thing I would do is add the root 3 over 2 over to the right-hand side. So we get the sine of 2x equals root 3 over 2. If we rewrite this one as an inverse, we've got 2x equals the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. And now it's time to check out our unit circle again. So we're looking for a sine or a y value of root 3 over 2. That happens at the angles pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. So now we need to take our 2x and set that equal to pi over 3. But then we have to add on this 2 pi n. And then if we go 2x equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Now we're not quite done because x isn't all by itself. So on this first one, we'll have to divide everything by 2. So we'll end up getting x equals, well, pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6, plus these 2's cancel out, so we get pi n. With this one, again, we're going to divide everything by 2. So we get x equals 2 pi over 3 divided by 2 is 2 pi over 6, but 2 pi over 6 reduces down to pi over 3. And then again, these 2's cancel out, so we get plus pi n. In our next example, we've got 3 tangent of x over 2 plus 3 equals 0. First thing I would do is subtract that 3 over to the right-hand side. So we've got 3 tangent of x over 2 equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 3, and we get the tangent of x over 2 equals negative 1. Then if we rewrite this one as an inverse, we get x over 2 equals the inverse tangent of negative 1. Now, since tangent has a period of pi, remember when we do inverse tangents, we're just looking between 0 and pi. So this tangent value of negative 1 happens at the angle 3 pi over 4. So we're going to take this x over 2 and set that equal to 3 pi over 4, plus this time we use pi times n, since the tangent, again, has a period of just pi. Now, in this one, we're dividing x by 2, so we're going to have to multiply everything by 2 in order to get that all by itself. Those cancel out, and we end up getting x equals, well, 2 times 3 pi over 4 ends up giving us 3 pi over 2, plus 2 times pi times n is 2 pi n for this one. In our next example, we've got secant squared minus 2 tangent of x equals 4. First thing I see is that this one is a secant and this one is a tangent. So I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity to replace that secant squared. So we can replace that with 1 plus the tangent squared of x minus 2 tangent of x equals 4. And again, this one has sort of a quadratic look to it since it's got this squared term and a first power term. So I want a 0 on one side. So I'm going to subtract this 4 over. And I'm actually going to rewrite this in power descending order right away as well. So we get tangent squared of x minus 2 tangent of x. And then 1 minus 4 gives us negative 3 equals 0. Now this one, we can do some sum and product factoring. So we end up getting the tangent of x minus 3 and the tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. Now that we have this factored out, let's go ahead and take each of our individual factors and set them equal to 0. So tangent of x minus 3 equals 0 and tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to solve the one on the right-hand side first. So subtract the 1 over. We get tangent of x equals negative 1. Rewriting this one as an inverse, x equals the inverse tangent of negative 1. And then finding that angle on the unit circle, that's the angle 3 pi over 4. 
So we got x equals 3 pi over 4, and we're going to have to add on this pi n to the very end of it. On this other equation, let's add that 3 over to the right-hand side. So tangent of x equals 3. Rewriting this one as an inverse, we get the inverse tangent of 3. Now we're not going to be able to find this one on our unit circle. So what I'm going to do with this inverse tangent of 3 is just leave it alone and add on that pi n to the right-hand side. And then we're all done with this one. Last example, we're going to be using our graphing calculator to help us solve this equation. So we're going to look between the interval from 0 to 2 pi, and we're going to solve the equation 2 sine of x plus the cosine of x equals 0. So I would go into your y equals screen and just type that equation in, 2 sine of x plus the cosine of x. And then I'm going to have you check a couple of things on your calculator. First thing I would check is that you are in radian mode, since we're using radian angles. Second thing I want you to look at is your window on your calculator. We're going from 0 to 2 pi, so that's going to be our x values. So my x minimum I'm going to put at negative 1. My x maximum I'm going to put at 7, since that's just a little bit bigger than 2 pi. And then if we go ahead and graph this out, we get a picture that looks something like this. Now remember, we're looking between this 0 value and 2 pi, which is somewhere out here. I'm going to use that 0 operation on my calculator, so second calc, and it's option number 2. It's going to ask us for a left bound point, so you arrow over to the left, hit enter, and then arrow over to the right, hit enter again, so it's going to look in that interval. Looks like we cross at an x value of 2.678 if we round that to three decimals. There's also another crossing point over here, so we need to check that one. So we're going to go second calc, pick that zero option again. We have to be left bound, so hit enter. Then we have to be right bound, so we're going to arrow over to the right past that point. Hit enter one more time. It's going to look in that interval, and it looks like the x value there is 5.820 if we went to three decimals. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.